Hi everyone, good to be here. So my name is Victoria and I am R&D strategy lead at an arts organization that's based in London called Serpentine. So together with Radical Exchange um, and an arts-led organization called Aerosene Foundation, we're currently working on developing, testing and offering to the wider cultural ecosystem a model for the creation and stewardship of art, if we can go to the first slide, exactly that's it, um, called Partial Common Ownership. So what we'll try to do with that in the next 10 minutes is we'll walk you through the larger contents within which this uh, project is situated, as well as the specificities of PCO as a socioeconomic model for the create. Next slide. So part of where we're coming from here is the idea that uh, art and the sort of the artistic and cultural world sort of structures our imagination in really important ways. Um, there, you know, it is obviously kind of a, a vector for ideology and it also kind of structures the space of possibilities that, uh, that people imagine. Uh, so, and I think this, this includes in the area, in the sort of realm of ownership and, uh, and economics. So, these are a couple, uh, a couple works of art. The, uh, the Skull is, is a work by, uh, by Damien Hirst. Uh, basically what it is, is it's a uh, skull with a bunch of diamonds embedded in it. Um, and uh, what's, it, basically what's interesting about it is that it's like, um, the materials in it are so obviously extremely expensive that it sort of raises this question in your mind about like, what is the artist doing with the value here? Like is the, is the actual, is the reconfiguration of these diamonds, which would be valuable in a bag, into a skull, actually adding value or, you know, and there's also this, just this kind of, frankly, this sort of emptiness to the actual work of art that sort of refocuses your attention on the economics of what's happening in the art. And then the, the work of art on the, on the right is by Cameron Rowland, and what that is is it's, a, um, it's a, a, a parcel of land which has been simply taken off the market. So uh, it can't be bought, it'll never be bought, it has just been removed from circulation completely. And so you can kind of see, uh, basically on the, on the, in the one on the left you can sort of see this like, uh, you know, in, in sort of an artistic pointing to uh, you know, capitalist value adding as the sort of horizon uh, of of possibility, and on the and on the right, you can see sort of a um, uh, a, a a reaction to that or a movement to you know again you know a complete removal of something from the capitalist ecosystem um, as as a work of art. And I think in, you know I think actually both of these works of art, are, in my opinion, interesting. But the, what's interesting about them is that they're, they're, they're kind of just pointing to a, an issue. They're pointing to certain kind of horizons of possibility, sort of at the, at the, you know, at the extremes of marketization and non-marketization. And what we're really interested in doing is kind of building, building pathways for um, uh, not just kind of highlighting these issues, but finding uh, new paradigms for, for for you know, value in art to interact. Yeah, so um, kind of talking about the sort of integration between what the artwork is saying and how it actually operates as a socioeconomic reality. Um, the kind of the key question that we're trying to kind of ask in our collaboration is how can we go beyond the gestural and cultural production? So beyond making a critique or a point with an art object that then enters into dominant modes of financialized ownership and circulation as private property? Are there ways for art and social reality to blend or to integrate with greater alignment and to deviate from the private property model altogether? Can we make better use of the affordances of the cultural space to extend the experimentation and proposition making from art that is gestural to art that projects new possibilities at the level of socioeconomic relations. Next one, please. And so we believe that moving, when, once we start asking these questions, and really kind of posit this as a really kind of key objective for the direction in which culture production should go. Uh, we believe that there is a possibility to gather a community of transdisciplinary kind of enthusiasts and specialists uh, who can open up a new field of possibilities. And so this is something that we started exploring as part of Beyond Cultures of Ownership, which is a platform for nurturing cultural projects dedicated to such integrated experimentation. And tomorrow we will hear from three related projects 
And we, of course, hope that there will be other people in this room who will kind of become part of this uh, growing community and platform. Um, but here we're going to focus specifically on partial common ownership, uh, and we see it really as part of this larger family of experiments, and uh, PCO concerns itself specifically with rethinking art as an object that gets passed on from artist to exclusive owner. So in a normative art industry scenario, once an artwork is sold, it gets detached from its original context of creation and is owned as an object permanently for the rest of time. So instead, PCO positions art as a link in a cluster or network of dynamic relations between its context, so on this uh, diagram it's the group, the artist and temporary stewards. So no one ever owns a work of art exclusively. It, kind of the, the, the work um, is always held in perpetuity by the community or the group, uh, and instead stewardship is the means by which these connections are honored. So, and the reason I think this model has a lot of potential right now is because today, more than ever, art is a relational practice. Um, it's a practice that weaves together groups of peoples, knowledge systems, and causes. And so what PCO does is it draws full focus on the kind of relational and creator group interests within this constellation through temporary stewardship cycles of the artwork. So what we're working on now with the, with the Aerocene Foundation uh, has to do with uh, thinking about the community that inspires or that animates or that kind of gives rise to a work of art and kind of interpreting that community and thinking about how to build a practice, sort of a ritualistic practice of dedicating the work of art to the community from which it, it emerges and then instantiating that that link through uh, through an ownership structure. Um, uh, the you know the idea of stewardship of a work of art can start to sound sort of um, sort of abstract and mechanical. So our our hypothesis is that um, is that the really vital part of this work has to do with building uh, building rituals and building sort of you know social um, social connections and social happenings and phenomena. Through which, uh, through which works of art are kind of um, uh, dedicated to their community or involved with the people who will continue to, to interact with them. So um, the, the, the first sort of uh, uh, work and, and project that we're doing this with is, uh, as Victoria was saying, with the, uh, the Aerocene Foundation and uh, the uh, Argentinian artist uh, Tomas Saraceno. Um, Tomas has, um, has done a tremendous amount of work with uh, communities from the Salinas Grandes in Argentina who are um, working to uh, resist um, lithium extraction projects which are harming the salt flats and, uh, and um, using, uh, using the, the, the reserves of water in that area to, uh, to extract lithium. Um, the uh, Tomas and the Aristide Foundation have done a lot of really, really interesting work um, uh, drawing international attention in a, in a very creative way to the sort of uh, flows of, of water and, and energy through, these, uh, through the salt flats. And, um, uh, and the work that we're kind of um, uh, you know, contributing to or, or, or helping is um, uh, is, is going to you know sort of continue in that in that journey and you know weave together the um, weave together a number of, of of works that are being created by the community into a partial common ownership structure. Um, but we hope that uh, partial common ownership can address a sort of far broader um, uh, yeah, series of potential use cases or contextual adaptations, um, and that it can really spawn out um, an overlapping but ultimately adjacent uh, economic and social system for art creation and stewardship. Um, and we think that PCO is particularly interesting in contexts where communities and organizations want to work with artists in advancing their missions and to have a model that's integrated with intentions of those collaborations um, as, part of, uh, as part of these projects. Um, however, you know, even within the current kind of let's say art world or art context, um, 
uh, model, there is an opportunity to use PCO because artists primarily work in very networked and collaborative ways. Um, and there are many artists, artists who want to uh, want their communities to remain attached to the artwork, not just in credit line or inspiration, but as socioeconomic stakeholders. So uh, with this, we are also inviting everybody to come and join some of the open space sessions that will be dedicated to this topic. So if you're interested in PCO, do join us later today and tomorrow. Thank you so much.